Welcome to Electra Online. Here we're going to talk about the six main orbital parameters that are very important when we talk about GPS or any satellite circumventing the Earth or revolving around the Earth. So, what are those six parameters? Well, first of all, it's the semi-major axis of the orbit. So when you look at this drawing right here, this here represents the equatorial plane. So when you take the Earth and you cut it right in the middle to the equator and you send, extend it out into space, that is what we call the equatorial plane. And then the orbits of the satellites will be relative to that equatorial plane. So this blue line here represents a tilted orbit relative to the equatorial plane. You can see then that sometimes the satellite will be above the equatorial plane and sometimes the satellite will be below the equatorial plane. So that's why sometimes when you see a map uh, on, on television where they show the satellites, the satellites tend to do this as they go around the Earth, up and down, above and below, and, and above and below the equator. That's because of the orbit is, is directed that way or tilted that way. So first of all, we have what we call the distance from the center of the orbit, which is essentially the, the gravitational center of the Earth, out to the orbit of the satellite, and that would be what we call the semi-major axis of the orbit. So when it's, the orbit is skinnier in this direction and longer in this direction, so because it tends to be elliptical in nature, not quite circular, but a little bit elliptical, so it would be what we call half the distance along the major axis. And that's called the semi-major axis. That's one of the main orbital parameters. The second one is what we call the eccentricity. Now the eccentricity is a measure of whether or not the, the orbit is near circular or more in the sense of the elliptical orbit. So here you can see is an ellipse. Here's the focus on one side. You'd have the focus on the other side. That's another focus right there. And then notice that from the middle to the end of that orbit along the long side, that's called the semi-major axis. Semi-minor axis on the middle to the, uh, the closer side of the orbit, so to speak. And then if you draw a line from the focus to this point, that distance is also equal to A. That's also the distance of the semi-major axis. Now the eccentricity is defined as the square root of 1 minus the ratio of B over A, which is the semi-minor axis divided by the semi-major axis quantity squared. If this is equal to 0, then it's a circle. If it's equal to 1, then of course it is essentially a straight line, because then b is 0 and a is infinite in respect to b. So that's, it ranges from 0 to 1. The third main orbital parameter is the inclination of the orbit. So you can see how much is the orbit tilted, so inclination or tilt, and that would be an angle, a measure of an angle, and that tends to be fairly constant. The orbit will be pretty well at the same tilt, we just need to know what that is. The next parameter is the longitude of ascending node. What does that mean? Well, here you can see that it's the angle from the origin of longitude. That's, that's the primary meridian. So it's, it's the angle from the primary meridian all the way around until the point where the satellite pokes through the reference frame, the Earth's equatorial plane. So it's the angle measured, so if this is the prime meridian, it would be whatever point the satellite pokes through the, the, uh, the reference plane, and that angle is called the longitude of ascending node. So that could be a few degrees, could be 180 degrees. Here it looks like it's 180 degrees, but of course it can be any number, any number between 0 and 180, depending upon where the prime meridian is, as opposed to where the uh, position is of the satellite, when it goes through the equatorial plane. The next parameter is what we call the argument of the periapsis. So the periapsis is essentially the point where it's closest to the center of the Earth, so that's where it's closer, then this would be where it's farther. So that's perigee and apogee, so to speak, in an orbit. And so that would be the closest point, and it's the angle from the point where it pokes through the center, uh, to the equatorial plane, to where the periapsis is located. So this angle, now here it shows up as about a 90 degree angle, but of course it could be any angle, depending upon the, how the orbit is oriented. And so where it goes through the equatorial plane from this point 
two of the periapsises, the point that's closest to the center of the gravitational center of the Earth, that is called the argument of the periapsis, and of course that's an angle, that's a, an angle in radians. And then finally, the mean anomaly of the epoch. Now, epoch is a time, and so what we want to do here is understand where the satellite is at now as compared to where the periapsis is, and so that distance would be a fraction of the entire period of the orbit of the satellite. So essentially, it's expressed in terms of what portion of the entire period has elapsed from the point where it passed the periapsis to where the satellite currently is. And that's called the true anomaly or the mean anomaly of the epoch. Epoch typically is a word refer referencing to time, so it's a time slice. How long did it take to go from the periapsis to the satellite? Then it's usually in terms of a fraction of the total period of the orbit. So those are the six main orbital parameters, which will be they're very common in GPS. And obviously those appear in word two and word three. Um, not word two, but uh, the subframe two and the subframe. I keep saying word subframe two and subframe t, where we have a lot of the ephemeris data coming in in regular on the regular interval from the satellite to the receiver on the ground, and it will always contain these six parameters and more. And we'll talk about, of course, all the various things that are in there, but those are the six main parameters, and now you understand what they are. So when you see them in the message, in navigation message, in uh, subframe two and three, now we know what they mean and why they're there. And that is how it's done.